Released February 6th, 1991, and a week later in North America, Street Fighter II revolutionized not only the arcade, but later would revolutionize home gaming as well. I can remember at my local Walmart, there was a arcade cabinet that was nestled between the two entrances to the store. It was one of the rare two-player Street Fighter cabinets, and I was obsessed with it. Me and my brother would constantly gather at that kiosk every single time that my parents took us shopping. I developed such a fascination with Guile, E Honda, Dalsim, Ryu, but also all the villains. I wondered how M. Bison gathered a Mike Tyson-esque boxer, a masked bullfighter, a huge, gigantic Thai kickboxer, all together in a criminal enterprise. I also developed a lifelong obsession with the music in the game as well. I still, on my phone, have hundreds of different dance mixes and remixes of all of those incredible original songs. I became obsessed with collecting all of the G.I. Joes, both the 3.75 inch and the 12 inch doll-like figures. I literally begged my parents until I had all of them. Boy, I wish I still had some of those figures today. But regardless, Street Fighter 2, in all its iterations, was really what brought me from your casual, everyday kid that played Mario and Zelda to someone who was much more interested in gaming and the stories behind the games, and I'll forever remember it for that. Released in December 1995 and a year later in North America, Sui Koden was one of the first RPGs that really hooked me. I remember coming across it by chance at Funko Land and thinking that the cover art looked very unique, so I wanted to give it a try. Well, when I got home, I was completely enamored with it. I had never seen anything like it, being able to recruit so many characters, some of them that helped in your base of operations, and some of them that you could use in combat. You could even recruit the defeated enemy generals in the game. It had impressive RPG mechanics, and it also had tactical battles where you commanded your army. I remember falling in love with so many of the characters, and even though the characters didn't have huge backstories because there were so many, I enjoyed making them up in my head. I'll never forget this incredible RPG that set me on a path to experience other great things like Final Fantasy, Persona, and the like. Originally released in 1996 as Biohazard in Japan, when Resident Evil came to North America, it took the gaming world by storm. I remember having seen early previews for it in one of the gaming magazines of the time, and I couldn't believe that they were going to make a game like that. And eventually I heard nothing more about it, but then one day it came out, and I had to have it. And I got it, and I could not believe the depth of the story and the characters. There was such a great ensemble cast of all of the special tactics and rescue police officers, and I wanted to know all their backstories. I obsessively sought every document and letter and note that you could find in the game so I could find out more about them and what had happened at the mansion in the underground laboratory. I was completely obsessed with Chris, Wesker, Jill, especially Jill, <laughs> but uh, it really developed a lifelong love of survival horror and horror in gaming. I can remember being so anxious at certain parts of the game that I would have to stop because I was terrified of wasting too much ammunition or losing my progress. And then later on, I became obsessed with completing it with as few saves as possible and as quickly as possible. I've always loved Resident Evil, I loved all of the sequels, and we can thank this wonderful original for that. Released in 1999 as a follow-up to Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VIII completely shattered my world. I had to have it on day one because I had loved Final Fantasy VII so much, and I was not ready for how incredible the game was. The story and world, so rich, so deep, child soldiers being used in the conflicts, an evil sorceress trying to cast time compression, and one of the most iconic love stories 
in gaming or even fiction history between Squall and Renoa. I didn't think it was possible to fall in love with a fictional character, but like many young men of the time, I totally fell for Renoa. I thought about her more than I did the girls at school. The gameplay was different. It definitely had a different gameplay loop than the uh, prior Final Fantasies, but with such an engrossing story and incredible characters and the wonderful graphics for the time, the game simply couldn't be beat. And if I wasn't already completely hooked into the RPG genre, I certainly was going to be now. In 2013, I was in a long, dark age of gaming. I had recently only been playing the most recent baseball and sports games. Work had really taken over my life as my career was growing, and I didn't have a lot of time for gaming. I remember on one of my vacations, I decided I was going to try out the new Tomb Raider reboot that I'd heard so much about. I was never really hugely into the Tomb Raider games, I probably played them as much as everyone else that grew up at the PlayStation, but I wanted to give it a try. And I could not believe how incredible it was. Instead of Laura being this badass with massive bosoms and sex appeal, she was presented as a real human being, a girl that was pursuing her education and knowledge and was put into terrible situations. Situations she had to learn skills with and to cope with just to survive. Extreme danger. Um, the game really presented her vulnerability. Uh, I remember the quick time events. The deaths when you failed them were brutal and it showed just how fragile human beings and Laura Croft were. The story was just incredible and watching her grow from someone that was scared and helpless to an actual badass person was such an incredible experience and it is single-handedly responsible for getting me back into gaming. If this game didn't come out and didn't have such an effect on me, I probably never would have got back into this, never would have made a YouTube channel, and I wouldn't be enjoying the games I do today. In conclusion, gaming is an important part of many of our lives. It can be therapeutic to look back on all of the experiences that have made us the gamers we are today. Thank you for watching, and as always, stay creepy. Thank you.